Coming to you from Strings and Things Studio in Ventura, California, I'm Katie. I'm Anne. And I'm Karen. And this is the Strings Unraveled Book Club. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Hello. Um, we decided to add just a quick little segment to our book club discussion. <laughs> um, if you listen to our regular podcast, we spend you know an hour probably sp- talking about what, what we're, we're working, working on. on. <laughs> but uh, Anne had the idea that maybe we would just give each other a minute or two to talk about what we're actually working on while we discuss the book. So what we have in our hands right right now. So Anne, what are you working on? You can just picture it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I am making my warm up mitts pattern which is a fingerless fingerless mitts pattern. Um, it's so fun and easy. It's a great gift pattern um, in a kind of golden rod color. It's that cool um, Michael's Cool Wool Merino that was a limited edition yarn they started this mm. winter. Oh, the... Um, I love it. Nice. It's more... It feels a little more fingering. You've it, worked with it a bit. It looks, it looks like a fingering. Can I see the... Oh, yeah. That looks what are they calling it? Weird. I can sh- I can pull mine out and you this if is, you want to compare. But this is the um, yeah I would. This it is... looks like it's missing like a whole ply. Maybe yeah because it feels really. I mean it, it knits I up thought fine. it was fingering. It, it knits up DK sure. looking, but Karen, you, you talk know? about what you're working on while yeah. I go find mine. Okay, <laughs> so I am working on a sample for myself of a pattern that I'm going to do a test sample for, but they haven't sent me the yarn yet. Called Charlie's by Vanessa Smith, and it is a one skein. Um, lace shawl Ooh. in knitting. Let me see. Let me see the picture of the finish. And it's, it's gorgeous. So the shawl is called Charlie's by Vanessa Smith, and I'm using stash. Yay! Yay! It's the butter popcorn. Color. Warm butter. It's called warmed butter, uh, or warm melted butter. It, it's from, perfect. It's like a sock yarn from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers, and it's wonderful and beautiful nice. and it's for my sample because um i'm waiting for the yarn company to send me their one skein but in the meantime um i just wanted to get familiar with the pattern and i can't really put it down because it's really fun yeah it looks <laughs> fun it's been a while since i've seen like a really wearable one skein mm-hmm. yeah shawl, and that looks very wearable it's like it's a four row repeat over and over for the bulk of it and then you there are two other charts but i really like that for the one chart the other two charts you only do once and then this one she gives you a stitch count for every row and for every repeat i'm like yeah so and it it, you can find it on ravelry so i'm not sure why the yarn company maybe the yarn company just wants a sample in their yarn yeah Yeah. and they're they've asked me to um, I'm on their list of people who want to use their yarn cool. for samples. So anyway, so you can, f- again, it's Charlie's and you can find it on Ravelry. And I think I'm going to do multiples of these. So I, I'm, I'm starting to adapt Anne's philosophy of doing more than one. <laughs> oh, good. Good. <laughs> That's a good philosophy. You really get your bang for your experience or for mm-hmm. your buck, however you want to yeah. think of that. <laughs> Um, I am working on a set of baskets. This is the mosaic basket pattern that I've taught as a class before. The patterns from Yarn and Chai, I think, is the name it, of her it, blog. That is the same girl who did the gingham yes. um, pot holders. Yeah. Um, so it's her pattern. This I'm making a three-set, small, medium, large, um, as new class samples. So that is what I am crocheting today. They're real cute. I like it's fun to refresh yarn. things, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit of, like, I had a little leftover thing, uh, hand spun that somebody, I got in a trade or a swap or something a long time it's ago. It's really pretty. It's got a tiny bit of sparkle in it. It's got all the melon colors. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It matches your LaCroix. Oh, it does. Oh, it's it's the color does. of a Pomplamoose LaCroix, if you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about our Okay, okay. So this month we are reading a book called Fight Night by Miriam Taves. This was my choice. Um, Let me put my stitch marker in so I don't lose track of my row. Okay. So here is the um, inside the book jacket um, teaser for this. Um, It says, from the bestselling author of Women Talking in All My Puny Sorrows, a compassionate, darkly humorous, and deeply wise new novel about three generations of women. You're a small thing, Grandma writes. And you must learn to fight. Swiv's grandma Elvira has been fighting all her life, 
From her upbringing in a strict religious community, she has fought those who wanted to take away her joy, her independence, and her spirit. She has fought to make peace with her loved ones when they have chosen to leave her, and now, even as her health fails, Grandma is fighting for her family. For her daughter, partnerless in the third term of a pregnancy, and for her granddaughter, Swiv, a spirited nine-year-old who has been suspended from school. <laughs> Cramped together in their Toronto home on the precipice of extraordinary change, Grandma and Swiv undertake a vital new project, setting out to explain their lives in letters as they will, that they will never send. Alternating between the exuberant, precocious voice of young Swiv and her irrepressible, tenacious grandma, Fight Night is a love letter to mothers and granddaughters. Sorry, excuse me, lover. It is a love letter to mothers and grandmothers and to all the women who are still fighting painfully, ferociously for a way to live on their own terms. So, initial thoughts? I love this book. I really I do loved too. it too. I do. Okay, I, good. <laughs> I didn't realize she was only nine. Yeah. I, I don't think it's like stated in the book. Actually. Not in the book that I could tell. I, I yeah. I was picturing her about 11. Yeah. 11, I figured 12. about that same age. Yeah. I guess so, she's nine. And yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to like take issue with the use of precocious. She is, I mean, I guess if she's nine and I was reading her as 11, yeah. maybe she is precocious, but she's, she's not really precocious, annoying, uh, no, I'm so child clever. literary child trope you know no, she's she's a hot mess and she's a pretty realistic <laughs> sounding it's all t- I mean it's not all told but 99% of it is told from her perspective and it's mm-hmm. like I, I found that it seemed like it read like a just an average nine year old girl maybe yeah. a little special maybe yeah. you know but uh, just and, and that she's like just so messy yeah she's Mirabella to a T like I love my tangles yeah Yes. <laughs> the Nike swooshes. Yep. The, Nike the girls swooshes who were like, eyes. we love your look. Can we copy? Yes. <laughs> so they tore their clothes and wore them dirty. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a look. That's right. Um, well, I'm glad that you both enjoyed it because I did as well. Um, this is the second Miriam Taves book that I read and I enjoyed the first one. So I was excited um, to pick this one up. And um yeah, I found a list of book club questions that we can get into. But basically, um, the story's told through Swiv, except for I, I think it was just one chapter that was told through Grandma's perspective, yep. which was perfect. S- it was so fascinating. The because you the way that you picture this was my favorite part is the way that you picture everybody through Swiv's like lens you think you know this character and how they would mm-hmm. act and how they would speak and whatever, you know, the things grandma says. And then you get the perspective of grandma writing and it was like, oh, this is so perfect. I know. Like every time she interjected and was like, are you warm enough? Are you okay? Yes. Like so nurturing, which was not the picture I was getting of grandma, grandma. Yes. from mm-hmm. Swiv. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm going to cry tonight. Okay. Just so you guys know, <laughs> because it was just so good and so heartening. Yeah. And it's a nice short book. Like it's a, it's a good one to pick up and read. It was, I would say I had some difficulty with some parts of it. Um, like, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we can get into it. it being sad and hard to, you know, get through, but mm-hmm. um, in general it was, it was pretty, I enjoyed it. The yeah. one critique that I saw most often I like to look through reviews was that the narrative style is hard to follow, which I guess I could see if you didn't like the idea of, I mean, you're reading basically a letter. It's a long, long, it's a very long letter or (laughs) series of letters. Yeah. Um, and they said that it was erratic, which I'm like, well, it's a nine year old's letter. So I can, (laughs) I feel like you could justify it. I didn't read it that way, but in, in the audiobook, I felt like it was very clear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The audiobook was great. Um, I started reading it, like the physical copy of it, and I got through about like half of it before I started the audiobook, and I just went back to the beginning and started it again. And I listened through the whole thing, and it, it's been maybe a week since I finished it, maybe like four or five days, I don't know. But it was, I enjoyed it enough to be like, oh, I should listen to it a second time. I didn't end up doing it, but I could have seen myself also, listening to yeah. it a second time. I was like, oh, great. To refresh my memory. Yeah, great. We have more time. I'm going to listen to it again. Yes. It I often so stopped my the Kindle version so I could bookmark or make notes mm-hmm. because some things came to mind. I was like, it, it was one, it was a book I wanted to interact with. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a group of questions from readinggroupguides.com. Um, question number one says, think about the title fight night. Why do you think Taze chose this title and what are the characters fighting? 
Well, I kept waiting for like the event, right? The Which night. We get, yeah. we get, we do get the event. Yeah. But it's a, they fight their whole lives. Yeah. Like every day is a Which, fight. Exactly. All three of Which them. Which one? <laughs> Which fight night? <laughs> yeah. Um, con chigaletes. Con chigaletes. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I was picturing the. Um, do you see? Because the way she describes them, mm-hmm. she like opens them and they slip down her throat so easy. I thought yeah. they were cheese puffs. Oh, no. I thought they were the little um, gelatin cups. Oh, oh, they're noodles. Yeah, well, yeah, I had to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I figured when they they're talked the about little, like not orchetta shape, though, but like an ear. Yeah, I figured they had to be. I was thinking of not not so much cheese puffs, but those cheese crisps. In like, um, but now that I know it's dried pasta, then it's even more right. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know if it is dried pasta because she does talk about cooking it at some point. I feel like. Yeah, they're dry. It's just mm-hmm. she's making pasta for them. Because you can, yeah. Because ramen, you know, oh, those dried, dried ramen. Like, think of like dried ramen. Yeah. It was cooked and then it fell yeah, on the floor yeah, and then yeah, it yeah. dried out. Yeah. I understand. Um, oh, I took it as or she when you open the container it. of yes. dried yeah. pasta. Yes. Yeah. And they flew everywhere. Yes. Um, Bombs away, Swiss. But it took a long time. <laughs> Bombs away. It took a long Sweet. time for me to understand what she was making. When she was yes. making I'm like, what are conchigalates? <laughs> I, I actually tried typing it in once but I wasn't sure how to spell it right because so I was listening I to went, the audio yeah yeah I had the actual book so I was like well how do I spell this word I went very phonetically first and I came across like some weird pastry that uh-huh. didn't wasn't quite the right spelling mm. and then I'm like well maybe this is like an Italian word or like I went more towards like yeah. conchi or whatever uh and then I understood it was pasta yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so let's go through the three main characters of the book you have Swiv who's nine you have her mother who really doesn't have a name except her nickname which I think is Mushi yeah um I'm assuming that's a nickname Tell Mushi she's strong yep and grandma um so what are each of them fighting right so grandma fought the longest obviously mm-hmm. but you know she grew up in a super strict conservative uh it seemed cultish religious Mm-hmm. society i don't know it doesn't really specify what it is exactly except that no. she's russian right yeah um and so i think the majority of her life is spent fighting against you know the life that she left and the people who you know remind her of that time that she was there um you have the mom who is an actress or a struggling actress or a <laughs> inspired you know hoping to be an actress um and she's fighting to raise both a, a nine-year-old and to take care of her aging mother, right? Mm-hmm. Well, like so many moms, she's like fighting to preserve her own like personhood mm-hmm. <laughs> and find her place in the world. Yeah. Um, as and, well as fighting herself to stay present yes. for her family. There's a whole aspect of it about her mental health and worrying about her mental health. And it's not really clear if she's suffering the same thing that her father and sister are, you know, suffered from where they both committed suicide Mm -hmm. and she's worried that that might happen to her. Um, And Swiv is also worried that that might happen, which was the part that I had a hard time listening or reading, you know, about is her Mm -hmm. worrying about her mom and, um, I think grandma even says like, you know, she's, that's what she's worried about. And I don't know if it's necessarily something that she has to struggle with, or is just worried that she might have to struggle with, you know, that Mm -hmm. wasn't clear Mm -hmm. as if she actually felt that way or not. Um, and then you have Swiv who is nine years old and, you know, doesn't go to school anymore because she got kicked out for what, for fighting. Yeah. I think literally for fighting. Literally for fighting. Um, King of the castle or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we remember what she what got her expelled? Can't I remember. don't remember. It's very early on. She like fights. She's playing King of the Castle and she fights with another girl or something. Yeah, it's, it's a something like fight. that. But wasn't some of it a? I I vaguely got the sense that <gasps> she was defending herself and it yeah, was justified yeah, yeah, yeah. because the girl was just really awful to her. She eventually tells Grandma that she punched the girl or something like that because he said the the child said that. Um, dad was being tortured by um oh by yeah. fascists or something yes or something like that um 
Or that he was being tortured for being a fascist. So, oh, yeah, he yeah. was the fascist. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so they're all fighting for various reasons and different, you know, things. And and Grandma says, you know, that you have to learn how to fight right. So, um, second question says, who is the book addressed to and why is this character not present in Swizz's life? Um, why do you think that Taves chose a letter for the novel's form? Well, it gives us, like, a very clear narrator and a clear point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes the child be a, like, gives the child some authority, maybe? Yeah, I can see that. Because um, who wants to listen to a nine-year-old tell you how the world is? Right. There's not a really I did, and I'll sign up for another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not really a great way of justifying why a nine-year-old would be the author of this book, right? Mm-hmm. If it weren't for a letter form. But a nine-year-old writing to her dad who's somewhere out there. Yeah. A, yeah, an absent father. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of kid is Swift, <laughs> um, is the third question. What kind of kid is she? She's rough and tumble. Yes. She's self-aware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's awkward. Yep. Deeply oh, yeah. awkward. <laughs> She's, she's she's me. Yeah, <laughs> she's both like quiet and and not at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like she's, I think she's shy, yeah. you know, and she's also terrified of people thinking that either she's not normal or her family is not normal. Because there's that whole scene of them on the bus and <laughs> the, the mom bus. and the girl that's like, oh my god, your mom's awesome, and she's like, oh my god, I'm gonna get out. And then they get off the bus yeah. at the at the, uh, <laughs> the strip club, and Grandma's like, what are we doing here, Swift? <laughs> I just had to get away from those people before they no- really got to know <laughs> she's us. She's like, why can't you just act normal, Mom? <laughs> what, what was what exercise was Mom doing that she'd lay on the ground and push against the wall? I don't know. <laughs> Mom does seem weird. <laughs> that would upset me, too. Like, you're on a walk, and then the person you're walking with just gets down on the ground and pushes their feet against the, the wall? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know either. Maybe she was doing, like, a hamstring stretch i imagined like a standing kind of push-up thing like i didn't get she she was laying on the ground i just like she was pushing against i don't know for for some reason i pictured her laying prone on the ground yeah i don't know (laughs) but yeah it would be embarrassing if she was doing that for sure (laughs) i loved her raging at the stationery store too (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) i'm taking 30 seconds to address this postcard and you can't give me that time yeah um so this you know goes into the next question what about grandma and mushi uh mom what kind of people are they and does swiv see them clearly it would have been really nice to get a another chapter perspective from mom's perspective and i'm not sure why the author chose to not include that because mom didn't get a voice did she she grandma got well, a no, voice she does have a chapter that swiv reads the letter that she wrote oh, to her uh, yeah, husband yeah. or, you know, to his father. Exactly. Um, but you don't get like a, a chapter not in letter form. You know what I mean? Cause even grandma's, the, even the baby in utero gets a voice. <laughs> um, she writes, she, she writes about her brother, I think a few times. Sister. The sister. sister. I was sister. I pictured Gord to be that Gord was gonna be a boy the whole time. Yes. Too, yeah. So I, I appreciate that. I but think nope. because it it took me a while to realize because they're talking like G O U R D, like you're a gourd. No, it's G O R D. G O R D. I don't know why that's the biggest because I thought that was short for Gordon or something. Instead of oh. but then I thought, well well when you listen to the audio, mm-hmm. it's not really spelled. I thought, oh maybe it's like a gourd. Like that's she's got a I gourd in her belly. But yeah. in the book it's G O R D. But also what kind of name is Swift? So, you know, yeah, maybe I it's well, just a weird name. I don't I don't know. And how is Swift S W I V? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um yeah, we already kinda of touched on it, but the the chapter from grandma's perspective mm-hmm. and how that's right. eloquent and with it, she seems compared to how Swiv knows her or imagines her being, right? Which I think is, like, is so perfect, you know? <laughs> like, you have a vision of how you think, you know, your loved ones are, or, you know, you're someone who is aged more than, <laughs> than you. Um, and I don't know how... Yeah, I don't know how influenced that chapter... Uh, what am I trying to say? Like, how realistic it was, right? But it's just, it was so nice to see that Grandma wasn't, like, this little helpless, you know, Grandma that she 
that uh, Swift made her out to be for so long that she was definitely more with it mentally than you would have assumed if you had just been listening to how Swift described her, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it also gave perspective in how, not only how much she had fought, but her mom's whole story about how she went off to be an actress in whatever country that was, Romania mm-hmm. or whatever it was. Albania. That, Albania. Things that ensued in that, you know, chunk of her life. And um, yeah, I thought that was pretty fascinating. It was. Um, I, I'm like, as you talk about that, I'm wondering, like, is that just another way to the reason that we don't really hear from mom's point of view currently mm-hmm. is that she's so like in internally fighting. Yeah. Yeah. The she's sh- currently yeah. fighting. Yeah. yeah. That we can only look at it from the outside of the people around her. Right. Was I right in assuming that the, that Gord's father is the, um, director or whatever. No, uh, and he's like it's a crew. Someone on the no. uh, who was it? She insists that she can prove that that Swift's father and is Gord's father. father. Okay, really? Yes. I I kept thinking it was someone that was on the camera crew or something there on was location. A, yes, person. There was someone she had an affair with, but yes, at oh, when that's he's, right. she announces her pregnancy, uh-huh. he is like this isn't my baby. I'm right. leaving. And right. she's like, no, this is your baby. It is impossible that it's the other person's baby. And I can prove it. Okay. Mm. But he wouldn't listen. He was like drunk out of his head. Yeah. And he was out of there. Yep. Okay. Well then, and yeah, I was wrong in assuming that. I'm wondering if this is like a Canadian abbreviation because everything I see about G O R D is gastro, gastroesophageal. Oh. Um, <laughs> reflex disease, which in the U S we abbreviate as GERD. Right. <laughs> and so, but if you look at the symptoms of gourd, it's gourd. Uh, feeling or being sick, persistent cough that might worsen during night, chest pain, wheezing. Um, it's it's like the beginnings of pregnancy. Uh, <laughs> so I wonder. I don't know. It's funny you bring that up because James has self-diagnosed himself with gourd. He's oh. like, I got it. I'm like, okay, well, well you can go to a doctor and find out yeah. for sure if you want. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. It's a little challenging to diagnose. Mm. Um, but it does run in my family, so... Um, fun. <laughs> uh, Taze often uses exaggerations in Swiv's narration. What effect? What is the effect of this choice? Um, exaggerations. I yeah. love them because she amps them up more and more as we get to the end of the book. Mm-hmm. Like uh, what is it? It's, I can't even remember. But it like took four thousand minutes to yes. do whatever or. It, and it's the, one million, yeah. Yeah, and it's the numbers are so big in the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always, I also liked... Helped with the drama. Yeah. She was always so convinced that Grandma was about to die right then. Like, like she can't walk another step or she'll die. Like, And I think in her mind that that's exactly what was going to happen, right? And, and I don't know how realistic that was, but it's like, Grandma can't walk down the block. She'll die. You know? I think it might be have been kind of real though. Yeah, maybe because she was on a on a nitro spray, and the poor little nine year old knew like how many puffs mm-hmm. it took till you have to call an ambulance. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was like she can't go on a boat; she'll die if she goes on a yeah, boat. She'll you know? fall right up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I loved her description of how the cousin was clinging to grandma, mm-hmm. and how everybody loves to hold on to grandma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's my grandma. Um, what does Swiv mean when she refers to her family's editorial meetings and how do the meetings themselves differ from what we might assume based on that phrase and why do you think she uses it it must have been something she heard to feel grown up yeah I would think so (laughs) you know that's her you Mm -hmm. know homeschooling assignment is to write letters right so she's writing a letter to and she's given out the assignments too like mom you gotta put your you know oh yeah so maybe it's a way for her to like have a little control over her life, you know? Mm-hmm. She's the one in charge of the editorial meetings. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I also love mm-hmm. like grandma's like, what are we learning today, Swift? It's like we're didn't do math. If uh all of the math problems that was like if grandma spills, you know, forty conchigolettes on the floor for a year, how many conchigolettes do I have to pick up or whatever? Homeschool mom and me co- totally cringe. <laughs> that part. I'm like, no, that's un that's unschooling. Uh. <laughs> Oh. Well, I don't think any of them, you know, <laughs> planned on doing homeschooling. Yeah. Um, who is Willet Braun, and why is he so infamous in Grandma's circles? 
he must be the church leader. Yeah, it seemed that way, that he was the the man in charge of wherever it was that that she had left. Well, the one that made everyone uncomfortable and everyone was afraid of him yeah. too. Um, I bookmarked a passage that, as I was listening to it, I thought, you know, that's I I need to uh, I need to revisit this. So I believe this is the um chapter that where grandma is speaking um yeah um so she said uh hold on let me find the beginning of the sentence that church in our town those willet bronze so smug so certain that they caused mass scale tragedy they were bandits they crept in and tiptoed around in the dark we couldn't see what they were doing at the time but we felt it all those willet bronze they robbed us blind they stole our souls they hung out their shingles as soul savers even though even as they were destroying them they replaced our love, our joy, our emotions, our tragedies. Rage, sorrow, violence, lust, desire, sorry. Am I embarrassing you, Swift? Well, they burn it all down, but listen. Our love, our resilience, our madness. We go crazy, of course. We lose ourselves. We're human. They took all those things and replaced them with evil and with guilt. Jeepers, creepers, ah, oh, well, we'll slay their hypocrisy with our jokes. High five. They took all those things we needed to navigate the world. They took the beautiful things right under our noses, crept in like thieves, Replaced our tolerance with condemnation, our desire with shame, our feelings with sin, our wild joy with discipline, our agency with obedience, our imaginations with rules, every act of joyous rebellion with crippling hatred, our impulses with self-loathing, our empathy with sanctimoniousness, threats, cruelty, our curiosity with isolation, willingful ignorance, infantilism and punishment, our fires with ashes, our love with fear and trembling. They took our life force and we fight to reclaim it. We fight and we fight and we fight and we fight. We fight to love, to love ourselves. We fight for access to our feelings, for access to our fires. We fight for access to God. They stole God from us. We fight for our lives. Some of us lose that fight. Oh, it can bring a person to their knees. To think Willet Braun came around to the house. To think he came around to the house to have us listen to him. Um, tell us that Grandpa and Momo were cast out, unable to enter the gates of heaven. To think of it, Swiv, there are few losses in life that can bring a person to their knees. Have mercy on our souls. Grandpa and Momo, too, both of them kneeling on the train tracks. All the Willet bronze. God was the farthest right thing from their minds. Those scavengers, those thieves, those heretics. Grandma and Momo were closer to God than any of them. They knelt. They touched death. Finally, did they pray? So, yeah, it seemed as though that was a um, pretty hard place to be able to leave i would like to hear the story of how that happened yeah and i wonder how much of it is like the previous miriam taves book that i read which is women talking which is about a group of women leaving a strict community like mm -hmm. that um so i like to imagine grandma was one of those <laughs> women in that story um but yeah it was it was I really enjoyed that um, portion of the book when we got to hear from Grandma's side of the story because it definitely gave us a lot of context. Yep. Um, um, this question isn't in here, but it just reminded me of... I can't remember his name, the man who wants to buy their house. Yeah. And why is that in there? <laughs> I think it's just more to... I thought that was going to become a thing. What? Wants their property to yeah. build a... He needs them. He's got the neighbor's pro he. He's yeah. ready to sign up, but she's the last holdout, mm -hmm. and she's the one thwarting his plans Reminding to me of up gentrify. When he's the only house left around all yeah. those big giant yeah. buildings because he won't sell his house. Um, I if so, it's just another another um, another fight, another obstacle yeah. for them to fight to keep their, okay. their place. Yeah. Um, I also like it's always it's. There's a lot of male characters who pick away at these women. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's the um, there's the the guy trying to buy the house. There's this horrible preacher. There's the um, the absentee father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's the director. Mm -hmm. There's the mm -hmm. um, there's the director of her play. Yeah. Yeah. The director of her play. I'm trying to think. Oh, the bro the brothers of yeah. Grandma, like yeah. who may leave the sisters destitute to find their own path. Mm -hmm. um, just every 
there's I mean it's just interesting to have those characters just constantly beating away at these women. Yeah, there's like <laughs> archetypes of all these bad types of yeah, yeah, men yeah. that you can encounter in your life. So it's it's yeah, I guess that makes sense that that would be another layer to that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the guy in the bus. Wasn't there a guy in the bus? Yeah, who said... wouldn't get up for, and give the seat to the yeah. mom. That's why the mom was mad and freaking yeah. out. <laughs> and he, didn't he, like, call her a name or something? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, What happened to mom in Albania? And why does this... How, why and how does this discovery influence your perception of her character? So she went to Albania because she was offered a role in a film that she couldn't turn down. Um... And it sounded like a complete shit show. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> they didn't have food. They didn't have water. They didn't have places to sleep, it seemed like. They didn't have access to the, you know, outside world while they were filming this terrible, yeah. dangerous, you know. Wasn't she, like, the lone woman, too? So there's... I got the I sense that so. she was, like, a lone woman along with all these men out yeah. in the middle of nowhere. It and so sounded like it, That yeah. sounds frightening to me. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, it's, and she hurt herself, you know, falling, doing a stunt that she was not, you know, trained or prepared or, you know, able to do. That was terrifying. Right? The description of that was, like, yeah. horrifying. Hanging from a cliff <laughs> yeah. and falling and, yeah, so I can imagine that that would, you know, really take a toll on your mental health and your, I mean, general health and, you know, yeah. overall health. It's, um... Uh... It, you take it for granted that like movies are glamorous and the making of movies is gla- are yes. glamorous and it removes all the glamour oh, yes. <laughs> of film production. And you got to wonder like how many, how like, you take it for granted that all your needs will be met. Yeah. You know, like, um, that she had to feed the dogs the little bit of food she got so that they wouldn't terrorize her. Right. Like what kind of workplace is this that your boss has nasty dogs that are nipping at your heels? Right. And you can't eat your own food because you're giving it to the dogs every day. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, Let's talk about Grandma and Swift's trip to Fresno. I love that they came to Fresno. I was wondering your take on that, Karen. You as our resident Fresno expert. Yeah. Okay. I know. What an honor to be the resident Fresno. I have expert. notes. I have notes. I also have family in Fresno and spent I do too. have spent a lot of time in the Fresno area. Yes. So that was chapter twelve. Okay. I love it. And I made two notes only because I know I'm being ticky tack. There aren't seagulls on inland lakes in California. Just so you know. Seagulls do not come that far in and to the lakes. I think they do. I think they do. I don't, I would agree with you perhaps about the lakes, but I have seen them in wacky. They come in, but then they go back out and they only Um, come in when there's a big storm on the coast for safety. And then they go back out. I mean, I was only there for like 20 years. (laughs) Can Um, you see the Hollywood sign from there? (laughs) On on any day, no matter how clear it is. (laughs) In Los Angeles, you're lucky if you can see right? it. <laughs> but I, other than that little bit, I just, I, I was like, of course, everything comes back to Fresno. <laughs> I, I, I think I even read a passage about this to my husband. He's like, there's, I don't know what it is about Fresno, but movies reference going there or being there. It's like, it's not. Well, it's quite a big metro. Met, met, metropolis really right it It, is now but even when i when i lived there and it was being referenced in movies even in the 60s 50s and 60s it was just for agriculture it Mm -hmm. wasn't really a metropolitan area at all yeah what still is a very agricultural place even for the populace right Mm -hmm. so it's a weird mix of country right city, well you know? see <laughs> if you're in clovis that's where all the uh, the ranchers are yeah, uh fresno and the outskirting is more inland but just to the west of there is more agriculture and so you get more agriculture to the west and north of there and there, it makes me think of this it was a tiktok or an instagram video or something that i saw and it was this woman who looked like the sort of person you would expect to live in maybe like the deep of Florida. <laughs> she probably lived and in Fresno. And she was or saying the like. that starts with an H that's right there too? I don't know. Well, she was saying like, no, no, no. Like it's like somebody had commented like, oh, you must be from Florida or something. She's uh-huh. like, no, no, no. California like raised baby. And like, there's this guy that was like <laughs> reacting to the video and he was like 
rolling his eyes like, I doubt it. She's like, Fresno all day. And it was like, oh, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, Fresno. Oh, there are parts of Bakersfield. There are parts of Fresno where you can find Florida man. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Not to, you know, you know. No uh, gators, sure but a lot of dumb Fresno, country. Yeah, I have love family it. in Fresno. Right. I mean, you can find people doing nice dumb, dumb country stuff. Sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it was funny, though, as That's people in California and yeah. are familiar with it. And are so are also familiar with Los Angeles Hollywood, right? So Swiv's excited to go to California, and can you see the Hollywood sign from there? And that, oh, and yeah. we're like, oh my god, that's so funny. You're going to Fresno. But I wonder if people who are not <laughs> from California know just how far Fresno is from San, from well, maybe. Hollywood. <laughs> Over three hundred and fifty miles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a like a whole yeah a it's whole like a, long way, it's like, like half a of well, a very long trip. It's like yes. a five hour trip. <laughs> yeah. Um, why? Was it necessary for grandma to go on this trip despite her poor health? She needed to connect with family, Mm -hmm. with these boys, and that Swiv had no reference for how important they were to her. Yeah, yeah, that's true for Swiv to see how important they were to grandma or how important grandma was to them, I think, also. Yeah, I think when you get older, you get to a certain point where you're like, okay. I, I didn't think about having a bucket list before, but I feel like there's a few things I really need to check off because I'm feeling closer to the end. Yeah. And I want to do, I, you want to do these things while you're still mobile. Right. It's like when we went to South Dakota because my mom-in-law really, really wanted to be able to see that while she could. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she'd been disconnected from grandma had been disconnected from her family for so long. And yeah. it, didn't they write to her or something like that? Maybe it was, um, I never understood what the one man was despairing about. Was he just dealing with general depression? Yeah, depression I think, or... I think he just, I thought with... he was dying. Yeah. I thought so too, but, but I don't didn't know. Really... She didn't explain what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Cause one of her, it was grandma's nephews. Right. So yeah. whatever yeah. second, uncle i don't know what that is um yeah was in despair dying but it didn't seem like he was because he walked for about a thousand miles you yeah. know what i mean so i don't know but he was suffering yeah he was suffering yeah um and it I, was you know i mean you kind of know part way through the book and especially at the end you know why grandma's still around and what she's holding out for right oh my god and it. so she knows <laughs> like if I'm going to go see my nephews, I got to go before this baby comes. Right. So she has a small window of time when she realizes like, now's the time to go and she's going to go with or without, you know, her daughter's approval, which, you know, her daughter would have a hundred percent said no. So she waits (laughs) until her daughter's gone and she's like, Swift, get your computer. We're booking a, uh, you know, plane tickets. Yep. So yeah. Um, in Fresno, the people Swiv meets talk about how strong mom is. How do you understand this emphasis? Well, it makes sense when you have heard grandma's testimonial. Yeah. It mm-hmm. still doesn't make sense to Swiv. Right. Yeah, I wanted to know a little bit more about, from Swiv's perspective, why. Like, I wanted her to realize, like, oh, yeah, my mom is strong. You know, she does say it to her, like, your strong mom, the people in Fresno told me that, right? And she and she's touched by that. But mm-hmm. I wanted that little bit of recognition for Swift to realize, like, to express why, you know, which she doesn't really do. do she's you nine think years she old. She sees it when mom makes her way down to the ICU. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like yeah. Maybe that's her moment. She understands that mom is strong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Um,. How did you understand mom's reaction when Swiv reports this back to her? Because Swiv tells her, like, yeah, everybody everybody says you're strong. And she it seems to be very touched by that, right? So I don't know if she maybe doesn't hear it that often or if she maybe doesn't see it herself that way. Well, I think I would take it back to her, like, being, you know, like, I'm picturing, like, a curled up... Um hedgehog or something Mm -hmm. you know just kind of navel gazing of the struggles that are on her shoulders yeah so when somebody gives you a compliment and acknowledges what you're what you're bearing Mm -hmm. like that's gonna lift you up yeah right yeah definitely i Um, think it's always affirming you might feel you're so in the midst of like you said of your struggles mm -hmm. you cannot even 
there's not even a part of your brain that says I'm doing this because I'm strong. You can't even go there. You're just like, this is the next thing I got to do. And this is the next thing I got to do. And, and you're so, like you said, in the navel gazing middle of it, but having your strength affirmed gives you a confidence because you might think, even if you let yourself think I'm strong, you're going to have self doubt. Like, no, I don't feel strong. I don't perceive myself strong. It's very, um, like I said, it's a very affirming to get someone else's perspective that, and especially if she's worried about having a mental health issue, mm-hmm. she may think I'm only, I don't trust my own perceptions. Right. And when someone else goes, no, you really are someone who, who only knows that, who's so far outside. Right. Not yeah. right in the middle of it. Yeah. I imagine that they would be trusted sources too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like they've known her for the whole picture of her life, mm-hmm. and they come from the same background. There's yeah. such treasure in the in people who've known you for so long, mm-hmm. right? Um, so you, she would trust the source because there's something like like I really just personally hate when people feel like they're telling you a platitude mm-hmm. of like, oh, you're so whatever. And you're like, like you don't even know yeah, me. You don't know me. Like, <laughs> I mean, there's the woman on the bus that tells her, like, you know, that she admires her, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, but that's, but that's a complete stranger. Right off her shoulder, too, yeah. I bet. Like, yeah. she just went on with her life and day. Right. She's got other things to do. Yeah. Um. So I, I just think it, it was a, like shining a light down a tunnel, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can see that. Um. Okay. Talk about the first time Gord meets Grandma at the hospital. Mm, no. <laughs> and what can we glean from this scene? <laughs> so the very end of the book, um, you've listened this far. You've listened to it. You know, you've read the book. And if you haven't, it's your own damn this fault. Is, now is when we tell you we're about to spoil it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you should know that already. It happens every time. <laughs> so Grandma's in the hospital because she is not doing so well. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm gonna just interject. She gets asked to do the dance she did as a girl, right? <laughs> and oh she wow! Gets up in the air and she falls, breaks her arm, and knocks out a tooth. Yeah, and then they're like, "It's fine. We gotta go home." They get on an airplane. Yeah, <laughs> like that's so ridiculous, oh, Grandma, and so worrisome all at the same time. Yeah. Um. So she's in the hospital. She's not doing so well. Mom comes to the hospital to meet um, Swiv and Grandma, and then Swiv's like, Mom, you just peed your pants. What are you doing? <laughs> she did not pee your pants. Her water broke. She goes into labor. She has Gord at the same hospital at the same time Grandma is in the ICU. Um, and Swiv's running back and forth, you know, telling Grandma what happened, going back to see her mom, looking for a donut at one point. <laughs> um <laughs> Because everybody tells her you should go get a donut. <laughs> I love the nurse who like she's won't trying say to get her donut. to say it. Yeah, that was so cute. Um, and then at one point, she really needs Grandma to see the baby, right? And Grandma wants to know what's happening, so Swift smuggles the baby in her backpack. I love that. Just born, fresh out the oven, baby, in her backpack down to the ICU to see Grandma. Oh wow! Pulls her out. Look, Grandma, here's the baby. And there's raging mom. And Grandma's where's so excited, my baby? and then mom but, comes barging in. But she, where's my family? Say, yeah, where's my family? Is yeah. what she said. Yeah. Because I also expected her to be like, what? What? Yeah. Yeah. what are where you are my babies? Monster yeah. mom. Yeah, but where's she's family. She's running to her family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. It, yeah, you mentioned before it shows not literally how strong she is. Yeah. Because she just delivered a baby, <laughs> and you know. Also, this hospital, like, they need to get their shit Security together system. because yep, yep. not only was mom uh, able to leave and nobody uh, noticed, but I mean, it, at some point they did because I think there was a person right behind her, but that the baby was able to be yeah, smuggled like, in a backpack by a nine-year-old. At CMH, <laughs> you call it, so I mean, weird. I think it's at every, a lot of hospitals, but at CMH, we called it Baby Lojack. <laughs> There's like a little alarm on the yes. babies that you can't, like walk through certain parts of the hospital so if, off, yeah so yeah. if somebody like tries to walk off with your beautiful little baby yeah they can't go anywhere they can't, so they literally, <laughs> the door won't open so not to disparage the canadian hospital because that's the other thing is like mom's like or grandma's like let's get out of here i do not want to be in a hospital in america yes uh, <laughs> she's like i'm not paying for this yeah <laughs> let's go yeah so they book it back to Canada and then go to the hospital. I'm sure too. Like I felt this like underlying worry that 
the the home that she like fell in was going to try to keep her there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um talk about the tone of the book in contrast to what happens in the book and how do these two elements work together? So how would you describe the tone of the book? Light. Yeah. Mhm. And yeah. casual. And cute. Yeah. Because it's trying to expect like what the what the plot of the book is going to be right you're just mm-hmm. kind of going along for a ride and Swift telling you about what happened today what happened tomorrow we're going to Fresno right you're just sort of being carried along but at the same time that that's something that you know would bother me if I'm like why can't I figure out where this book is going like uh, th- there's no plot mm-hmm. right but there is because it's just not you you don't hear it necessarily right you mm-hmm. it's it's what's happening in the background and, Mm -hmm. and uh, which is so what happens in the book versus how you're told about what happens in the book. Right. Um, You're that's what childhood is though. Yeah. Like it's just happening. Kids have no control over Mm -hmm. what, what they're fated with and they just have to get through each day as much as an adult does, but they have no agency. Right. So they're like, today we're doing this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, there are definitely heavy themes and heavy experiences and terrible things that happen to everyone in the book. But at no point is it so... I mean, some things I think were hard to listen to or read, but never so much so that you were, like, bogged down in it. Because mm-hmm. it either had happened in the past and you were hearing about it, or if it was happening currently, it was through the lens of Swiv not being able to express exactly what it was, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yep. yeah, the contrast between the two... I think def I think Miriam Taves is an excellent author in that she can balance that line, mm-hmm. and you know exactly what's happening, and you know exactly what Swiv is talking about without her being able to express it to you because mm-hmm. she's only nine years old. Yep. Um. <laughs> Grandma's pillow was next to a thong. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, there was a thong <laughs> under the bed. Uh- <laughs> Oh. Ugh, yeah, there were so many funny parts that were like, this is such a childlike <laughs> oh my God, brain to be so concerned so about it. I laughed maybe a little more than I cried. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> uh, well, those are the anything else you want to talk about or any other parts that you enjoyed that you can think of off the top of your head? I adored this book. Mm-hmm. Good. It was wonderful. Excellent choice. I will want to read it again. I usually feel like I can take the recommendations from um, Timber pretty well you know because this Mm -hmm. was recommended on their instagram page is like oh we're excited about this new book and i was like i'll go read that book so i went and bought it and well glad that i did yeah knowing that you guys have both enjoyed her other book um it's women talking women talking Mm -hmm. and then her other one is all my puny sorrows which i have not read Um, read. it was hard read it it was hard for me to not pick it right up. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we can read it in a future episode. Yeah, I was like, well, I wanted to keep my head in this book, but you guys had both. Yeah. Spoke nightly of it. Yeah. Um, I, I really enjoyed Women Talking. I read that over mm-hmm. like a weekend. Um, that one's a little heavier. Because yeah. Because you're not through the the, the lens <laughs> of a nine-year-old. So, no, but I want different. everything to be through her lens. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm yeah, and it, it was the world according to Shiv. It, it was well written because you didn't find her obnoxious because Mm-mm. overly precocious children can be very obnoxious to me in books. I'm I, like, no nine year old is like this, except this was pretty realistic of I feel like a, a nine year old. And it any any quirkiness you understood because mm-hmm. of what was going on around her and her life, her, her upbringing. Whole, yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, that's fight night. I'm <laughs> sorry, the song of the books that just, you just, because I'm like, I mean, her mom and her grandma really tried to give her a normal life as much as they could mm-hmm. for their, their ability physically or mentally, right? Right. The grandma's sawing the books in half. <laughs> I loved that. She's like, it's too big of a book. Um, I also loved when Swiv was talking about um, when she took grandma to visit her friends and all the things her friends talk about and like what it's like to be around old people talking about whatever it is and you're like a little kid I'm like oh this is so perfect it was so funny I was dying when grandma talks about cremation because uh-huh. being fashionable oh yes it's in fashion now <laughs> guess what he decided to do he's gonna go with cremation to be fashionable oh like, that was oh so weird <laughs> and cheap yeah and I love how she watches 
call the midwife and there was one other thing oh, that's I'm like right. this is such a grandma that's thing. Right. That is a really good thing you brought up mm. because I wanted to get your take on like all of this very like of its moment references. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it did have very I mean, when was this book released? Like this year or last year? Um, yeah, and I was like, "Oh wow, that's like happening now." Yeah. There Which, was another yeah. I can't remember what the other was, but there were a couple I noticed. Do you think a lot of books do that and we don't notice them because we're not of their time? Probably. Yeah, this is from 2021, so they were very recent. Or is it going to be disruptive someday? For I don't a know. future person to be reading. I feel like I've book. read contemporary books though that don't do that as much or that I did not notice happening. So I'm it is funny that it that they did stand out in this. So I don't know if maybe she did it more than I'm used to or if they just I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. there were a couple. I don't remember what the other ones were, but there were like either a book or a song or something um, that I was like, oh, yeah, that is a current thing right now. <laughs> well, I have to say, like, I appreciated that there were real songs yes. reference as yes. opposed mm-hmm. to made up songs. Yep. Um, I There's a song that um, this, of course, the ending moment with grandma being able to hold um, Gord when... Um, Mm-hmm. when um, she's brought down to the ICU. I can never remember the song, and maybe, Karen, you will do. You might do good at this, but what is that song? And I've had to look it up recently. It's like, lightning crashes, an old man dies, a baby is born, is the lyric. <sighs> I have no I idea. I will tell you, I am the worst for knowing song names, or even who sings them. I Even from high school on, I never, ever, ever can remember that. Well, I'm starting to giggle uh, because that's the name of the song. I was going to say, it's called <laughs> Lightning Crashes by, by Live or Live. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. And I've had to look at, I think of the lyrics all song. the time, but I never, um, well, listen to it. <laughs> okay, and I then. planned I planned to look up the songs that Grandma liked and, and make like a little playlist. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, sometimes there's a feeling to a book and or that whole one we read about the made up rock band. Where yes. It's like, I wanted to go listen to those yeah, songs. Yeah, I wanted to be real. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like that they that uh, there were real, real things referenced. Real. Yeah. All right. What are we reading next? It's my turn. Fan's turn. Um, we're going to read Circe, which um, I spoiled a little bit by okay. asking you guys if you had read it. I've not read it. Um, Madeline Miller. Okay. It's her second novel. Um, her first novel is The Song of Achilles. Um, Circe came out not too long ago. Yeah, it's newish, I think. Um, I have it in paperback, so it's probably two years old, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Where is your 2018? So not too not too long. Okay. Um, it is a um, Greek. Go- I, I don't know if she's a demigoddess or a goddess. Uh-huh. Um, I because I'm in that mode because um, Hades Town, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> which I got to see this week, and Karen is seeing. All are you seeing it more than a two second times? time <laughs> next week, next Friday? I saw it yesterday. Which As... Hades Town is an amazing Broadway musical, previously a rock album. But by the time opera. this comes out, I will have seen it on the last night <sighs> for the second. It was amazing, amazing, amazing. Time. amazing, so. amazing. Um, so I got like in a mode of picking Greek mythology out. Uh, in the house of Helios, a god of the sun and mightiest of the titans, daughter is born. But Circe is a strange child, not powerful like her father, nor viciously alluring like her mother. Turning to the world of mortals for companionship, she discovers that she does possess power, the power of witchcraft, which can transform rivals into monsters and menace the gods themselves. Threatened, Zeus banishes Circe to a deserted island where she hones her occult craft and crosses paths with many of the famous figures in all of mythology, including the Minotaur, Daedalus, and his doomed son, Icarus, the murderous Medea, and of course, with wily Odysseus. But there is danger, too, for a woman who stands alone, and Circe unwittingly draws the wrath of both men and gods, ultimately finding herself pitied against one of the most terrifying and vengeful of the Olympians. To protect what she holds dear, Circe must summon her strength and choose once and for all whether she belongs with the god she is born from or the mortal she has come to love. Mm-hmm. Sounds cool. Yeah, it should be pretty good. Awesome. 
Yeah. Well, anything <laughs> else that anybody has read? I have not read anything else in the meantime. I had a pretty productive reading. Okay, what'd you read? <laughs> yep. uh, well, I'm in the middle of Odysseus because I had to move my tickets up a week. <laughs> So I thought I would finish Odysseus and get in the mood for a Greek um, mythological story as Hades Town is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm only halfway. But Odysseus, I've never read. I've never read the Iliad either. Um, but Odysseus, Odysseus is Odysseus, pretty. The Odyssey, or Odyssey, the Odyssey is much better. Yeah. It's pretty um, I mean, approachable. I, I read one of them in high school and I don't remember which one it was. Well, it's sort of probably the Odyssey. It's a 20 year journey of someone coming of Odysseus trying to get home. I do know the story. I just don't know yeah. if I don't remember which one it was. I just remember I had to read one of them. Well, like the Iliad is sort of, it's a two part. Iliad mm-hmm. is him leaving and his yeah. adventures leaving and the Odyssey mm-hmm. is his trying to come back. Um, and so I'm actually just approaching the part where in the Odyssey where Circe should appear. Um, but I lost time. So <laughs> I'm not done with the Odyssey. Um, but I listened to a book called The Mad Woman in the Attic, Ooh. which was, a, I think it was included with the Audible membership. I'm sorry, it's The Mad Woman Upstairs by Catherine Lowell. Mm. And it was about this girl who, she's the last living relative of the Bronte sisters and mm. her going to Oxford and um trying to like break free of that legacy and inheritance Mm -hmm. while also finding that inheritance. (laughs) And then there's a love story that goes along with it. Um, But it was sort of interesting because it was like the opportunity for Kathleen Lowell to just make a whole bunch of um, literary hypotheses about how to read the Bronte sisters. Hmm. And so I never read Jane Eyre. I've watched a ton of Jane Eyre movie versions. Uh Um, And I tried Wuthering Heights when I was like 11, but it was a little dense for me at the time. And then there was a new movie around that time. I think it starred Daniel Day-Lewis with Wuthering Heights. So I've really only watched movie versions of it. Uh And I've never read any Anne Bronte. So I have set (laughs) the goal of reading the Bronte sisters novels, starting with Jane Eyre. Hmm. It is performed by Thandie Newton. And mm-hmm. performed is the best way to say it, Ooh, nice. rather than read. If I mean, I loved her anyway. Uh huh. But this is freaking awesome. <laughs> it's an eighteen-hour book. <laughs> it is riveting to every moment. Oh wow, that's um, good. She is an excellent reader. Nice. Um, my daughter wants to watch the cheaper, newest cheaper by the dozen movie. Oh, yeah. Which is a book and movie that is dear to my heart. If you read it, you will see weird things that have crept into me, into my life mm-hmm. about it. Like, he's an efficiency expert, and I'm yep. all about, like, timing and finding yep. efficiencies. Is that the movie? I have this memory of watching a movie in my childhood where he's talking about how he can bathe himself in, like, 10 yeah, seconds or whatever absolutely. with the soap. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I that, like, almost every time I have to yeah. use an actual bar of yeah. soap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the book, it's um, shaving. Yes. Um, and how he got mad that he'd lose, like, three seconds or something. So there's only a few cringeworthy language and, a, you know, yeah. old antiquated words that I made sure, like, well, we do not say that. Yeah. Nope. We don't talk about people that way. But my daughter and I listened to it 10 minutes at a time going to and from school for about three weeks. Nice. And we just finished it. <clears throat> and so now she wants to watch all the movies. So we're starting and she's game to start with the oldest. I'm a big fan of the uh, uh, one from, was it Bonnie Hunt and um, yeah. uh, Steve Martin? Yeah. Well, we'll movie. get there. We'll get there. <laughs> um, it's sacred ground for me though. Yeah. But I love the two of them. Yeah. So, but the newest one, it's Zach Braff and somebody else. It looks a little more like yours, mine and ours. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have told her we actually have to travel to the newest movie. Right. Through five movies. Okay. <laughs> She's like, Mom, I just wanted to watch a movie that was coming out. <laughs> no, she loved Cheaper the Book so much that she's trusting me on this path. Okay, good. Um, okay, almost done. Uh, Odyssey, Mad Woman. Uh, those are my four books. I'm, I had a very productive nice. literary season here. Karen, do you have a long list? Always? I have a list, yes. Will you beat me? I, this is my longest, I think. Um, how many did you have? Oh, we are. I think we're tight. All right. Um, so I might have a fifth one, but I, I can only think of the four, four right now. The Stand In by Lily Chu. Um, how to on the back cover it says how to upend your life. <laughs> one, get fired by a gross handsy boss. Two, fail to do laundry again. Three, 
be mistaken for a famous Chinese actress for Fall Head First into Glitzy New World. <laughs> and it is really good. It, it, you want to, at first you think it's going to be one of those Prince and the Pauper kind of deals. It's not. It It is her sta- literally being the stand-in for this, uh, for an actress um, up in Ca- another Canadian. <laughs> but the actress is, for, is visiting from China and they do look like they could are related like they're the girl ha, has but but the style is very different you know the one from canadian you imagine she doesn't have to do her laundry she sleeps in her stuff you know she's she doesn't <laughs> wear makeup <laughs> so um yeah it makes some questionable life choices but <laughs> but then she ends up she needs money to help take care of a family member and she's going to lose. So she needs, so she's in a desperate spot and she takes this job to be the stand in, in public appearances. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a little bit of romance in there too. Cute. So I'm also reading, or I, I, I'm almost finished with a book by Aja Barber called consumed. And let me just read out. It's, um, printed it out Hold on. oh this thing that i'm writing my notes on <laughs> the need for collective change colonialism climate change and consumerism and if you get the audible it is it is um by it's spoken by Asha, by the author herself and it's a very conversational um very eye-opening about how why you know i'm now i'm one of those smaller those i'm not really the the people of her group that she's talking to the people that go to that buy three or four outfits every week that are obsessed with i'm like i'm more in the if you, she goes she even says if you're in the five to maybe ten arm and items per year you're not the problem <laughs> <laughs> and people at the lower social economic they're already closer to sustainability mm-hmm. but it so it's a nonfiction work but it is really 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 good um, the other one is I reread a book by Larissa Brown, who was in it where it is a wreck. It, it's kind of like ta- time traveling historian kind of thing, um, with definitely some romance going on. If you, if you like our other favorite, what is the other time traveling romance? It's really famous. Oh, Outlander. Watch. If you yeah. like Outlander, you're kind of going to love this. All right. Um, steamy too, huh? Steam. Yeah, definitely some steamy. <laughs> some of the steamy is, is self self-applied oh, well <laughs> but um the what is but a wreck is like a whale a be a really big beached whale when a whale comes up it's a wreck you know it has wrecked itself mm-hmm. but it provides food and nourishment and oil and it, it it's like a very it's a, it's for people that need uh, money you know, or not, but not, well, for the, the, it's like in Norway or someplace uh, during kind of Viking ish era. Oh. I get the sense. But anyway, so it was really good. So I reread Beautiful Wreck by Larissa Brown. And I listened to and read the Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia oh, Owens. And it was so good. It's on my upcoming, like, to read pile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's yep. a movie or a TV show or something coming out, yeah. right? Yep. Oh, I don't yeah, remember so. if it's a, uh, I think it's a, a series or a movie. Yeah. Is it? I, I don't know. Well, I, it no, hasn't no. come out yet, okay. <laughs> but this was really, 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 really good. And I could add some says. more movies. Yeah. I, I want to turn around and read it again. So okay. high praise. Anyways. Cool. Well, we'll see you in a few weeks for our regular book club. Uh, no, excuse me, our regular podcast episode. So if you want to hear more about the things that we are knitting or crocheting or whatever we're working on, that would be the episode for you. Um, so we'll talk to y'all then. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Strings Unraveled is a production of Strings and Things Studio with Anne Leckervin Cazzoli, Katie Von Rader Fraker, and Karen Wilmoth. Recorded and edited by Katie Von Rader Fraker. Find us online at stringsandthingsstudio.com or on Facebook or Instagram at Strings and Things Studio. You can email us at stringsandthingsinfo at gmail.com. <laughs>